In today's video, we're going to be using Visual Basic to make a little app that tells the times tables. Uh, so what we have to do is we enter a number in this box at the top, so for example 5, and then we click Display Times Tables. And up comes the first 12 uh, times tables for the number 5. Okay, if we can change that number, let's go to 10 and display that. You can see it does the 10 times tables. Right, so it's a good little app for learning your times tables. Right, and click Exit to close the program. So, to get started, we'll make a new project. Like always, Visual Basic on the left, Windows Forms app from the center column needs to be selected. Give it the name Times Tables. And make sure you browse to save that in your document somewhere. Okay, and press OK when you're ready to go. You get a blank form on your page, ready to be turned into our little app. So let's make it a little bit longer, so we'll resize it something like that. While well, we've got the form selected, we might as well change its uh, back colour. You can choose whatever colour you want. I'm going to choose like a darker purple kind of colour. Maybe indigo, that looks good. Um, what else do we need to do? We need to give it a name. So FRM Times Tables. Looking back up, the text we want to change. So the text in the top left hand corner there that says Form 1. We will change the times tables. And I think that will probably do us for the form. Next thing we want to bring out is a label for the header that goes at the top. So find a label, drag it out, give it the text times tables. And while we're there, we'll change the four colour. Something that contrasts well with purple and I know yellow. Yellow kind of colours contrast well. Uh, we'll make the heading a bit bigger and bolder. Something like that looks pretty good. Um, and just give it a name as well. So LDL header will do us. So that's our header all sorted. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in another label. And this time the name of this label will be LDL uh, number. Okay, scrolling up, change the text from label 1 to enter a number. You can put a colon there as well if you'd like. Now yeah, we need to change the font around a little bit, make it a bit bigger, so I might go up to size 10, and change the four colour, so the colour of the font, just to something light, so I'm just going to go back to white. Okay, I might even bump that text up to size 12. That looks pretty good. So we enter a number into our app. So over on the right here, we're going to need to put a text box in where the user can actually type in their chosen number. So grab a text box, bring it out, change its font to size 12. Okay, you can leave the color as is. Just need to change the name of that text box. So TXT number will probably do us. And then press enter. You feel free to stretch that out a bit if you want, but I don't think you'll be doing 1,000 times tables or anything like that, so it doesn't have to be too big. Make sure there's a little bit of a gap between the label and the text box as well, otherwise you might have a few issues with formatting when you actually run your app. So coming in below that, we're going to put a button in. Drag that out. Feel free to stretch it out, the width of our app there. And this button will be called BTN Display. Okay, what we're going to do is when we press this button, it displays the time ta times tables below. So let's give it the name. Uh, sorry, the text on top. Display times tables. And again, feel free to make that font a bit bigger. Let's we'll see how size 12 looks. Not too bad. Might need to make the button a bit bigger though, so it fits nicely. All right, so that's looking good. Uh -huh. The next thing we bring out is a list box. So there it is, a list box there. You want to stretch that out the width and you want to make it fairly long as well. You might even have to move all of this up a little bit so it's closer to the header. Otherwise we're not going to fit it all into the app. That's a bit better. Oops. So we can adjust this list box um, as needed a little bit later on. So in this list box here, going to give it a name, so where are we? 
Here it is. So it's called list box one at the moment. We want to call it LST, which is short for list box, and we'll call it times tables. So list times tables. Okay, that's looking good. And the final thing we need to bring out is a button that will just exit our app. So that button will say exit. Oops, sorry, BTN exit for its name. And the text on it will say exit. And feel free to make that text a bit bigger like we did with the other button. I think we did it size 12, so probably good to have this one consistent with that. Make it size 12 as well. Just stick it in the middle there somewhere. I think that'll do. So that is how our app is going to look. We just need to code it up now. So let's start with the easy one, the exit button. Double click on that and just write in the word end. Okay, so when button exit is clicked, we simply end it. So that closes the app off. Going back to our tab at the top here, the only other button we can click is this one here, the display times tables ones. So double click on that button. Now we're entering data for an event when button display is clicked. Alright, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the number out of this text box. We want to read that number that the user has typed in. Okay, so we're going to need to declare a variable. So DIM, I'll just call it number. And we're using whole numbers today, so we'll uh, declare it as an integer. Okay, and the value of number, so we already need to write number equals. And we're going to write txt number dot text. Now when information is typed into a text box, it comes in as a string. So we're going to need to convert that um, string to an integer. And the way we do that is we just go before the text number dot text here and we write the word val and open up some brackets and then close the brackets around the end of that. Okay, so just by putting val around text number dot text, it converts that string into an integer. Okay, so we'll just put a comment in there to explain that. So we'll say set the variable number to whatever the user enters into the box. Okay, so that explains what's going on up there. Just press enter a few times here so we can make some space. Now the next thing we want to do, every time we run or press the display times tables button, we want this list box to be cleared. Okay, so we might have our 10 times tables in there after pressing the button once. And if you want to see our 5 times tables and we press this button again, we need to make sure this list box clears itself completely before it displays the next um, set of times tables. So we need to write in list times tables dot items dot clear. Okay, and what that does is just clears uh, the list box each time we press display times tables. Okay, so right before calculating the times tables, clear the list box. Alright, so that's looking good. Now the next thing we need to do is actually work out our times tables. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing, but it all makes sense once it's all written. Okay, we're going to use a loop to do it. Okay, so instead of writing out 12 different times tables, we're just going to use a loop that will loop over and over again, uh, or over and over again 12 times until all our times tables are written. Okay, so we're going to use a for loop. We're using a for loop because we know how long our loop needs to run for. We know it needs to run 12 times. Okay, so we write for i equals 1 to 12. Okay. The letter I is just a random uh, letter that I came up with, and you'll see it used quite a bit in apps when you're using a loop. They just use the letter I. Okay, it doesn't really mean or stand for anything. You could replace it with a keyword that might make more sense to you if you wanted to. But we're basically saying this loop is going to run 12 times. So I might put a comment in there and say that. So loop the code below 12 times. Okay, so let's put in the code now that we want to um, loop over over and over again 12 times. You can see the word next came out automatically for us. Okay, and we'll use that in a second. So in between the four and the next, we need to write list times tables dot items dot add. Okay, we need to write what we want to add into this list box each time the loop is, or the code that is looped is run. All right, so we want to put in the letter I. 
Okay, it's going to start at 1. I is going to equal 1 to begin with. So we put in 1. Let me put the ampersand sign. And then in quotation marks, we've got a space, x, space. So it's going to be 1 times, and then we want to put the number that we're timesing it by. Okay, so we put the ampersand sign again, and we simply write number. So whatever the user typed in up the top here, okay, will now be displayed down here. So it could be 1 times 5, or 1 times 10. Okay, we don't know yet. So... It's just given us um, 1 times 5, yep, let's keep going, sorry, I'm just confusing myself. After number, we write the ampersand sign again, and we bring up some quotation marks. And inside the quotation marks, we put a space, and then the equal sign, and then another space. Alright, and after that, we're going to put the answer of the first times table. Okay, so we put the ampersand sign again, and we do our calculations. So I times... The number. Okay, so if you use 5 as an example, if the user typed in 5, it will be i, which is 1. So 1 times 5 equals, and we put the answer from the calculation of 1 times 5. Alright, that sounds confusing, looks confusing, but that is our line of code that's going to do all the work for us. I might put in a comment there just to explain that. So display the chosen numbers times tables. Alright, so that piece of code will run once and then we get down to this next one. Okay, we're just going to write next i and then we'll put a little comment next to that to explain what happens. So when it sees the word next, it ticks over i to the next um, number, so i will then equal 2. Then it will run through this code again and run it for the 2 times 5. We're using 5 as an example still. So we'll write increment a loop counter, which is i, by 1. Okay, so basically this little counter here, we'll just keep adding up until it gets to 12. Once we get to 12, we jump past this piece of code and we finish off our app. Okay, there's no more code we need to put in. So let's test that and see what that does. So we click start see if we've got a working app. So let's do our 2 times table. So we enter the number 2. If we just look at our code, the number will equal whatever we type in this box. Okay, so this number here is going to be set to the variable number. When we click display times tables, up comes our 12 times tables. So let's have a look at that. So i, to start with, will equal 1. Okay, and here's the number 1 just here. Okay, so i times the number. So the number was 2. And we've got the equal sign. Okay, there's the equal sign. And then we put in the calculation i times number. Okay, and we get the answer just there. We see the words next i, which means, right, oh, time to tick over our counter, come back to the start of the loop. i will now equal 2. And we can run this code again. So now we've got 2 times 2. And then we've got the answer equaling 4. Okay, we get to the next i, which ticks it over to 3. We come around, now i will equal 3. And it just keeps going all the way down until we get to 12. Okay, and then that will stop when it gets to 12 and finish our app off. Right, a little bit confusing, but hopefully it makes a little bit of sense to you. There's one other key word I want to tell you about. It's called concatenate. Okay, and as you can see inside the brackets here, we're joining together variables as well as text, okay, that we want to type in ourselves. The text we type in ourselves is just written between quotation marks, and the variables are written in black there. And they're all joined together by using that ampersand sign. And when we join together the variables and just text that we want to write ourselves, that's called concatenating our data. Okay, so we join it together, we concatenate it. Alright, so I think I've confused you enough in this video, but that's how we get our times tables going using a for loop. Remember, for loops are used when we know how long we want to loop our code for. And in this case, it was 12 times. Alright, so I'll stop the video there. Make sure you save him up, and I'll catch you in the next one.